McCarthy Welch Exchange, the Point of Order Edition, edited from the Army McCarthy hearings on June 9th of 1954 in Washington, D.C. Mr. Chairman, in view of that request by Mr. Do you have a point of order? Not exactly, Mr. Chairman, but in view of Mr. Walter's request that the information be given once we know of anyone who might be performing any work for the Communist Party, I think we should tell him that he has been performing any work for the Communist Party. A law firm, a young man named Fisher, whom he recommended, incidentally, to do the work for on this committee, who has been, for a number of years, a member of an organization which is named Oh, many years ago, as the legal bulwark of the Communist Party. An organization which always springs to defense of anyone who dares to expose the Communists. I certainly agree that Mr. Welch did not know of this young man at the time. He recommended as the assistant counsel for his committee. But he has such terror and such a great desire to know where anyone is located who may be serving a Communist cause. Mr. Welch. And I thought we should just call your attention to the fact that Mr. Fisher, who is still in your law firm today, whom you asked to have drawn over here, looking over the secret and the classified material, is a member of an organization, not named by me, but named by various committees, named by the Attorney General, as I recall, and be belong to it long after it has been exposed as the legal arm of the Communist Party. Knowing that, Mr. Welch, I just felt that it is a duty to respond to your urgent request that before sundown, when we know of anyone serving the Communist Party, we let the agency know. Now, we are now letting you know that your man did belong to this organization for either three or four years, belonged to it after he was out of law school. Now I hesitate to bring that up, but I have been rather bored with your funny request of Mr. Khan here that he personally get every communist out of government before sundown. Therefore, we will give you this information about the young man in your own organization. Now, I'm not asking you any time to explain, <clears throat> explain this, and I don't know. I assume you did not laugh. I don't think you have the conception of the danger of the Communist Party. I think you're unknowingly aiding it when you try to view this hearing in which we're attempting to bring out the facts. However, M Mr. Chairman, the chair should say there has been no recognition, no, no memory of Welch recommending either Mr. Fisher or anyone else as counsel for this committee. Uh, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Welch, I, I refer to the record then, Mr. Chairman, the Mr. Chairman, the new story on that, under these circumstances, I must myself something approaching a personal privilege. You may have it, sir, it will not be taken out of your time. Senator McCarthy, I do not know, Senator, Senator, sometimes you say, may I have your attention? I'm listening. I didn't know. May I have your attention? I, I, I can listen with one ear and talk with him. Now, now this time, sir... Oh, okay. I want you to listen with both. All right, got it. Senator McCarthy, I think until this moment... Good, just a minute. Let me ask Jim, dwelling on Jim... Jim, will you get the new story to the effect that this man belonged to this, to this Communist Front organization? Would you get the... I will tell you that belonged to it. Will, will, will you get the citations, order the citations showing that this was the legal arm of the Communist Party and the length of the time when it belonged and the fact that he was recommended by Mr. Welch? I think that should be in a record for Mr. Welch. Senator... The chair recognizes Mr. Welch. You won't need anything in the record when I finish telling you this. Until this moment, Senator, I think I never really gauged your cruelty or your recklessness. Fred Fisher.
Fisher is a young man who went to Harvard School and in my firm and is stating what it looks to be a brilliant career with us. While I decided to work for this community, I asked Jim Sinclair, who sits on my right, to be my first assistant. I said to Jim, pick somebody in the law firm to work under you that you would like. He chose Fred Fisher and they came down and on the afternoon play. That night, when we had a little stab at trying to see what the case is about, Fred Fisher and Jim St. Clair and I went to dinner together. I then said to these two young men, boys, I don't know anything about you except I've always liked you. But if there's anything funny in the life of either one of you that would hurt anybody in this case, you speak up quick. And Fred Fisher said, Mr. White, I was in law school and a period of months later, I belonged to the Lawyers Guild, as you have said, Mr. Sinister. He went on to say, I'm secretary of the Young Republicans League in the <clears throat> Newton, with the son of the Massachusetts governor. And I have the respect and the admiration of my community. And I am sure I have the respect and the admiration of 25 lawyers or so in hail and door. And I said, Fred, I just don't think I'm going to ask you to work on the case. If I do one of these cases, that will come out and go over national television. And it will dream and just hit like a dickens. And so, Senator, I asked him to go back to Boston. Little did I dream you could be so reckless and cruel as to do the injury to that lad. It is true he is still with Hale and Dorr, and it is true that he'll continue to work for Hale and Dorr. It is a regret that I have to say. Equally true that I fear he shall always bear a scar needlessly inflicted by you. If it were in my power to forgive you for your reckless cruelty, I like to think of it as a gentleman, and I would do so. But your forgiveness will have to come from someone other than me. Um, Mr. Chairman, may I say that Mr. Welch talked about this being cruel and reckless. He was just baiting. He has been baiting Mr. Khan here for hours, requesting that Mr. Khan, before sundown, get out of any department of the government anyone who is Mr. Khan and serving the communist cause. Now I just gave this man's record and I want to say Mr. Welch that has been labeled long before he became a member as early as 1944. Senator, uh, let, let me finish. May we not drop this? L let me finish. We know he belonged to the Liars Guild. No, let me finish. And Mr. Khan nods his head at me. I did, I think, no personal injury, Mr. Khan? No, 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 sir. I meant to do you no personal injury. No, sir. And if I did, no. I beg your pardon. Let us not assassinate this lad further, Senator. Let's, let's, you've done enough. Have you no sense of decency, sir? At long last. Have you no sense of decency? I know this hurts you, Mr. Welch. I'll say it hurts. Uh, may, may I say, Mr. Chairman, as a point of personal privilege, I'd like to finish this. Se Senator, I think it hurts you too, sir. I, I'd like to finish this. I know Mr. Khan would rather not have me to go into this. I intend to, however, and Mr. Welch talks about any sense of decency. It seems that Mr. Welch is pained so deeply. He thinks it's improper for me to give the record, the communist front record, of the man who you wanted to force upon this committee. But it doesn't pain him at all. There's no pain in his chest about the attempt to destroy the reputation and the take the jobs away from the young men who are working on my committee. And Mr. Welch, if... If I've said anything here, which is untrue, then tell me. I have heard you and everyone else talk so much about laying the truth upon the table. But when I heard you and everyone else talk <clears throat> about that completely phony Mr. Welch, I've been listening for a long time, he's saying, now, before sundown, you must get all these people out of the government. 
So that I just want you to have it very clear. Very clear that you are not so serious about that or you're trying to recommend this man for this committee. But the point is, the chair would like to say again that he doesn't believe that Mr. Welch recommended Mr. Fisher as counsel for this committee because he has, through his office, all the recommendations which were made and does not recall any of them coming from Mr. Welch. And that would include Mr. Fisher. Well, well let me ask, Mr. Welch, you, you brought him down, did you not, to act as your assistant? Mr. McCarthy, I will not discuss this further with you. You have sat within six feet of me and could not ask, and could ask, and could have asked, have asked about me with Fred Fisher. You have seen fit to bring it out, and if there is a God in heaven, it will do neither any cause you good. I will not discuss it further. I will not discuss Mr. Khan, and I will not ask Mr. Khan any more witnesses. You, Mr. Chairman, may, if you will, call the next witness.